Tanaka fam. We have brought in a special guest for you guys. This is going to be teaching you about financial literacy. I'm going to tell you right now, this is something you will need as an adult. You like your money, you want to keep your money, you need to learn this. Okay, so super important. I know sometimes you're going through school, you're going through class, you're like, why do I need this? What is the point of this? I'm going to tell you right now, this is very important. Okay, is there any... Actually, we're not going to do questions yet. This is Mr. Fred. Can you guys say good morning, Mr. Fred? Good morning, Mr. Fred. Good morning, everybody. So there will be time at the end for questions, so do your best to try to keep it in your head as he's going through his presentation, all right? You're going to need to use the restroom, any of that. I will be sitting at the back. Mr. Martin is at the back. You're going to come back very nicely, respectfully, let us know, and then we'll handle it then. Okay, I shouldn't see any like, I need to use the bathroom. No, we ain't doing that today. Okay, so hopefully you guys have a great time. Mr. Fred, this is all yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. All right, so when we begin, it's Mr. Fred Doc Dossel. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Mr. Tanaka Fam and Mr. Martin for having me here today. And yes, she actually nailed it all right on the head. A lot of times, unfortunately, we don't get taught about money as much as we should because at the end of the day money makes the world go round right now how many of you guys have heard of the saying money is the root of all evil have you heard that before you've definitely heard this right now with the root of all evil it's not money it's a love of money right but at the end of the day like I mentioned money does make the world go round clothing cell phones, electronics, whatever else you need. Unfortunately, we do need money to do that. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today, I actually represent Nikkei Credit Union. Locally here in Carson, our branch is called Mabuhay Credit Union. Ms. Tanaka Fab is one of our board members of our credit union. Uh, we definitely appreciate the work that she does uh, to help us serve our community, okay? So, just really quickly, what I wanna talk about today as a financial institution, we are here to serve you, your families, and our community with your money. And that's the finance part of it, right? So as an introduction, I'll be talking about some of the products and services that you know the credit union offers, and then we'll dive a little deeper on a couple of those things, which really makes sense, for, not just for you, but again, your families and our communities uh, to learn this, okay? Uh, so deposits, this is when money, when you put money in for, for safekeeping, right? So there's savings accounts, checking accounts, investment accounts. These are some of the, the ways that perhaps your parents or you know other uh, adults in your life are saving their money. Now there's also loan products. Uh, there's going to be credit cards. I'm sure you've heard of that before. Personal loans, cars. You know whether to to buy new cars or, or used cars as well as real estate is homes, right? So home equity lines of credit is using the value of the home for funding, for funds, right? So again, this, this is money going in, and this is money where people borrow money, okay? Now, particularly today, I'll be talking about these three things that at your level, you need to have a good understanding of, okay? Uh, and, and this is actually something that I, I have a little bit of jealousy uh, having you know folks your age learn about this now just to share really quickly I was actually not born and raised here in California I was born and raised in the other side of the world in the Philippines and I moved here when I was 18 years old so I didn't have the luxury of having somebody give this type of education to me so coming here I was an adult right at 18 years old but I definitely did not have this background under my belt uh, and unfortunately, that's going to be something that a lot of adults out there do not have this type of education as well. Uh, so again, savings, checking, and credit card. These are the three that I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper on today. Okay. Now that said, this isn't a one-way conversation. I want to hear from you guys today. Okay. So who wants to read this show of hands? Don't be shy now. Don't everybody all speak at once. Go ahead.
Awesome. Thank you. This is you. Oh, almost in cash. All right. Thank you. So savings account is where you store cash securely, right? It's times where it's almost a joke at this point, but sometimes people hide their money under their mattress or in jars at home. And there's a little bit of value to that. You have direct access to it, but there's also a huge risk to it. And at the same time too, your money really isn't working for you if you hide it somewhere uh, where it doesn't earn, right? Uh, and the insured part of it means that even if something was to happen to the financial institution, your money is safe, right? Uh, so that's exactly what that means right there. Now, why use savings account? Anybody want to read this? Go ahead. Awesome, thank you. I'm not gonna throw it to it. You mind passing it to the back, please? Thank you. All right, so it does have a little bit of distance, right? It's not like for the savings account, it's meant to be something that you use on a daily basis. It's, it's to put away for a later day, for a rainy day, like they say, right? Now, that's the first part of it is a savings account. That's literally for you to set aside, like I said, uh, you know, for use down the line. Now, the next thing is the checking account. There's the check, the physical check, the personal check. And who wants to read this? Go ahead. So that, what that says is it's daily use, right? You might pass it just to the back, please. Thank you. Uh, who wants to read this one? Go ahead. Yeah, I saw your hands first. Go ahead. So this is where uh, having a debit card, and I do have an image of our debit card here, uh, but you can use physical checks. Do you mind passing this to her, please? Thank you. Uh, so again, this is for daily use, right? The checking account. Uh, and I saw your hand earlier, go ahead. They typically come with personal checks and debit or ACM cards. These days, you'll probably use a debit or ACM card more often to access the money in your account. Okay, and actually one thing that I should be adding in my passive this for please. One thing that I should add here is uh, the e-payment options now. So there's Zelle, there's PayPal, there's uh, you know Google Pay, there's uh, all those other options would be connected to your checking account. And this again is what you use to pay for stuff regularly, right? So um, that's the main difference between the savings and the checking. The checking is what the money that you use directly uh, whereas the savings, there's a little bit of a distance, and, and it's meant to be that way. So you're not using your savings account when you should be using your checking account, right? So this is the debit card that I was mentioning earlier, and that is what you would use to connect, you know, if you need to, do, to withdraw from an ATM uh, or connect it to, again, Zelle or, you know, whatever the case is, right? Now, on the other side of the coin, the credit card, This is credit. There's, it's in the name, right? Credit. So you're basically borrowing that money. So that's the main difference. The checking account is your money that you put in the bank. The credit card, you're actually borrowing that. And a lot of people do not realize that distinction is that the checking account, you're using your money, but the credit card, you're paying for the right to use that money. So when people just swipe, you know, when they go on a shopping spree, you know, like all, all those movies, right? They always show like, uh, the you know the, the stars they go shopping and they come out with all these bags. A lot of times they use credit card on that. Unfortunately, uh, so that's what you're, it's a loan, right? Who wants to read this part of it? <clears throat> go ahead. You go ahead again. Right. 
We got some seconds here. Okay. So, again, it's used to pay a merchant. The merchant is the store that sells stuff, right? And then the rate that you pay, and again, this is something that not too many people think of, your credit score. <clears throat> Just like when you make promises, right? Your friends will know that there's people that unfortunately they make promises, they don't really follow through on it. And if you do it enough times, people are not going to trust you. That's the boy that cried wolf, right? You guys heard that story? The same thing in life in general, your credit score is, 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 is determined based on your credit worthiness. So if you actually follow through on what you're supposed to be doing, meaning pay off your debt when you're supposed to, that means your credit worthiness is high. And what that ultimately means is that your credit score is high, which means that you actually save money because they, you get charged less for your credit. The opposite of that is if you don't follow through on stuff, you're late on your payment, or worse, if you don't pay the stuff that you should be paying, your credit court, no, your credit score takes a most dive, and you get charged a lot more when you borrow stuff, when you loan stuff. Does that does that make sense to you guys? So again, just like promises that you follow, you you keep. If you do that regularly, your credit worthiness is high, which raises your credit score, and that decreases the the amount that you have to pay for credit, right? And in this particular case, credit that's tied to your credit your credit card, right? Um, so this is a sample of our credit card, uh, and there's advantages, obviously, both sides. So for the credits. For the credit card, the credit history. Again, if, if you follow through on stuff, that means that you have a positive credit history and that bumps up your credit worthiness, bumps up your credit score. And this this right here is something that many people definitely use. If, if your card is lost or stolen, The credit card companies typically would have some type of protection for that. Um, it's not necessary. It, I mean, there there is a level of protection for debit cards also, but for credit card, if you purchase or you know, if somebody steals your card, your credit card, and they use it to buy something, and unfortunately in this day and age, they, they don't even need your physical card. If they get your information, and that's why it's very important never to share your banking information, especially you know in this day and age with computers and, and everything else, uh, they can use that card, but with the with vast majority of credit cards, there is a level of protection. So you're not on the hook, so to speak, for stuff that are bought when your card is stolen, right? Uh, and there are credit cards that offer rewards. Uh, you probably hear stories of people that uh, when they you know, when they fly, when they travel, uh, when they check into hotels, they get rewards for it. So for a certain uh, dollar amount that you pay using the credit card, you get something back, right? So that's the rewards that's here. Uh, and the other additional benefits, if you buy a cell phone, a TV, whatever the case is, there are extended warranties that certain credit cards offer. Uh, and this one, this is something that a lot of people that are financially savvy, they use this to their advantage, uh, but this is, uh, it's challenging for some people. Remember how I told you credit cards, uh, it's a loan, right? And and what makes it a loan is, like say for instance, if I was to borrow money from you, right? I get $10, right? You lend me $10, when I pay that back, it's not just the $10. Typically, in you know, in a formal transaction like that, there's going to be an interest rate that I have to pay for to use your money, right? So whatever the interest rate is, that gets added on to the ten dollars that I initially borrowed. So it could be you know, ten dollars and ten cents. It could be whatever you know, depending on my credit worthiness, it could be more, right? Now, if I pay off the credit card bill in full, meaning if I 
borrowed $100 this month, in theory, I could have a full month, you know, for, for February, I could have the full month to pay that back. Now, if I pay off the full amount, then it's an interest-free loan right here. But a lot of times, people don't pay the full amount. And that's the problem because that $10 that I initially borrowed, if it takes me, you know, six months, a year to pay that back, I could be paying you 15, sometimes 20, $30 because of the interest rate alone. Is that, is that clear to you guys? So that's, this is a good thing to do if you are consistent with paying. But again, if, if you don't pay off the full amount or worse, if you're late or don't even pay it at all, that's going to cost you a lot more than that initial $10 that I just talked about here. Right? Um, and the flexibility, like I said, booking a hotel or renting a car, um, you don't have to have the funds then when you need it. But again, it's, it's important that you do make it, make it a point to pay that off on time, right? So those are some of the advantages of having a credit card. Now, just as an example, uh, I have an extra number here, but these are some of the rates that I found online for February, right? Capital One is between 19 to 29, not the 23, I think that's an old rate. Uh, so 19 to 29 for City, 17 to 27. For Chase, 19 to 27. Bank of America, 18 to 28. Now the difference is in general, credit unions are going to be a lot cheaper than those. So for Nikkei and from a boy credit union, it's between eight to $18. Now why are these ranges? Why is it not one specific rate for each of these cards? Does anybody know? I already mentioned the, the answer earlier. Does anybody know why it's, it's different numbers? Go ahead. It depends on the credit score. Perfect. Good answer. Somebody's paying attention. Assistant, please. All right. So again, it goes back to the credit score. You see how big of a difference that is? Say in, this, in the case of Chase, right? Somebody that actually pays their stuff on, online, they only pay 19, well, I say only, relatively for Chase, right? 19, 19% versus someone that has a spotty track record of paying, they're paying 27.99%, right? So it's not just a case of this one could be more than this, but just between the specific institution, there's also a big range there's a big difference between uh, what they offer. Is that is that pretty clear right there? All right, and then, so again, that's the difference between a debit card versus a credit card. The debit card, that's your money that you deposited to the bank or credit union, and the credit card is, like the name says, that's a loan, it's a credit, right? So both of them, very similar in that they're both plastic, uh, you know, but again, own money versus borrowed. This is linked to your account. That's a credit, a loan. And this one, there's uh, no interest on the money that you spend. The credit card, you get a monthly bill, right? And depending on if you pay off the full amount each month, it could end up costing you more, right? Uh, and the way that you spend more than what the amount is, is if you exceed your balance. Say you have $100 in your account, right? And you purchase something that's $120. Obviously that's more than the money that you have in the account. Uh, there is something called an overdraft where the financial institution will offer to pay even without you having the amount but to use that, you know, that option, you have to pay for it, right? So in, in the credit union's case, that could be a $30 fee. So to begin with, you were at 100, in this example, right, $100. You try to pay for something that's $120, and then you have to pay an extra $30 on top of that. So it's $150, so obviously not good, right? You have to have, uh, you have to be aware of how much funds you have in your account uh, and then again, for the credit card, your interest rate is based on your credit score, 
right? Um, is that, does anybody have a question about this part right here? The difference between a checking account versus uh, a credit card, a debit card versus a credit card? Go ahead. So, out of the two, which one do you think you should go with? Which would you prefer? To begin with, I would definitely recommend the debit card. I mean, it's, it's nice to have a credit card too, uh, but uh, just to get used to it, I think it, it's nice to, to get trained on the debit card. There are stuff called uh, uh, secured credit cards where it's kind of like in between the two. Say for instance, uh, and, and this, is some, this is a tool that people use if one, if they don't have any credit yet, or two, if they have bad credit that they need to get fixed, right? So a, a, a secured credit card, uh, and you have the option of picking the limit of the credit card, right? Say for instance, you have $500, and you wanna put that into a secured uh, credit card, so you have up to $500 to spend. It's treated as a credit card, but you basically are securing the, the, the card with money that you deposited in there, right? But for your age, it's definitely good to have a debit card. How many of you have a, a bank accounts already at this point? How many of you use a debit or a credit card at this time? You use it? All right, good. Um, and that's obviously something that your parents set up for you, right? How long have you had it? Okay, very recently, all right, that's good. Um, and uh, that's that's good training for you. This is for him in the back over there. Thank you. Um, so I would highly recommend for you all to, to have that conversation, uh, you know, with with your parents uh, at the very least to get you started on it. Now, again, I would discourage you from thinking that since you have a card, whether it's a debit card or a credit card, you can go spend whatever you want. Right? Obviously, it has to be within reason, right? So my kids, they, they all have accounts that, you know, that are joint. My, my wife and I have access to it. That way, you know, we, we deposit funds in the account, and if they need to purchase something and we're not there to pay for it, they can just use that card, right? So that's something that, obviously, you know, it varies greatly family to family, person to person, uh, but it's good training uh, to have that. Now, the credit card, that's going to be important um, a little bit later on, I would say. Um, how, how old is everybody here? What, like, what grade is everybody, by the way? You're all eighth grades? Seventh, eighth grade? So what is that, 12, 13 year olds? Okay, um, so um, at this point, I would not quite recommend a debit card, uh, the credit card yet, uh, but as you get closer to 18, um, I would recommend that, that you have one that's, you know, you're joint with your parent or guardian, because then at that point you start building up your credit. Now again, when I say build up your credit, don't go about it by dropping down, right? You need to be paying for stuff by, with, with your credit card, making it a point to pay off as much of the bill as you could, ideally all of it by the end of the month, right? So that's a really good question. But the, the, the answer is, at this point, the debit card, and then later, uh, you know, transition to the credit, credit card, okay? Um, any other questions? Oh, did I give you your stuff yet? No. Any other questions at this point? Go ahead. In your checking account. Remember how I said there's, there's a savings account and there's a checking account? You have, you can set it up however you want. Like for me, right? Just to use my example, my case as an example. I work, obviously. So when I get paid, I make the decision how much I want in each account that I have. And then for each sub account, like for in the case of me, my account at Nikkei, I determine how much I want to put into my savings and then how much I want to be able to spend in my checking account. So you decide how, you know, how, how much, how you want to split it, right? Any other questions? Go ahead. Do you pay monthly to the bank? 
Uh, in some cases, yes, yeah, some banks have uh, um, monthly fees. Typically, it's going to be more on the checking side because for savings in general, you actually get paid, right? Because your money gains interest as opposed to the checking because it is uh, a tool that you use in your daily activities. At that point, you know, there's depending on the financial institution, like banks like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, Citibank, um, you know, it could be as high as like, you know, 12 to $20 a month to have the account. Um, and in our credit union, uh, it's basically $6 a month. But if you have a certain amount in your checking account, which in our case, it's, it's if you have $600, or if you use your debit card at least six times a month, then it's free. So there's different variations based on the financial institution, uh, but that's actually a, a, a good question too because it's it depends, right? I mean, depending on the different financial institutions, and that's why uh, in general, um, obviously I'm I'm a little biased because I work for a credit union, but but in general, the credit union is going to be more community centric, all right? Because at the end of the day, it's the people that save money, the people that deposit account uh, funds into their account, they're the ones that are funding money for those that need to borrow money. So it's basically the community coming together to help each other out, right? Any, anybody else? Did I see another, go ahead. Do uh, someone replace it with continuity for I'm sorry, say that one more time. Do you like different countries or states like change the way you use like credit card or debit card? Different countries, definitely. Uh, different states, a very negligible amount because a lot of financial institutions are federal, meaning they cross different state lines. Our credit union just happens to be a state credit union. Uh, so ours is specific to California. But most of those big banks that I mentioned, they are throughout the United States. Not in Hawaii for some reason. Hawaii does not have a physical bank. They only have credit unions out there. But in general, most financial institutions in the US fall under the same umbrella. Different countries, they have control over how they want to do stuff. So yes, there's definitely differences uh, country to country. But state to state, for the most part, it's going to be very similar. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead. Into your go straight into your where now? Your credit card? No, not into the credit card. Um, remember, I said uh, the credit card is a loan. Um, so the credit card, you would have to, if, if you use a credit card, you have to pay the credit card itself to, uh, you know, to, to get the balance down, right? Now the debit card is different because the debit card is connected to the checking account. So if you deposit into the checking account, that you will have access to it through your debit card. Was that, was that what you were asking? Not the credit card? Okay, yeah, so as long as you deposit into the checking account, you will be able to access that using the debit card, right? Any other questions? Did you have a question? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else? Go ahead. So, like when you have any flexibility stuff, mm -hmm. what account should we pull that money out of to pay the bills in the To pay the bills, it's going to be your checking account for the most part. Because, um, and again, uh, this is the difference between the savings versus the checking. The savings, as much as possible, you just want to let that money go. So you, in theory, the savings account is just for you to be depositing to, not to be withdrawn from. The checking account is where, you know, your payments are gonna be coming out of it. So it's a lot more regular uh, in and out of funds, right? Anybody else? Do you think this is, information that that is important uh, and is it something that you know that should be discussed at this level yeah because I mean I, I it's unfortunate but like I've 
I've done I've, I've done presentations like this across different levels, right? I've done it for professionals, I've done it for college students and high school students, and I'm really glad that I get this opportunity to you know to be a little bit younger. Um, I got three kids, like I said, my, my boy is actually in seventh grade uh, at St. Philomena. So, uh, you know, this is conversations that we've had. I didn't have it growing up, uh, but I'm excited that there's this opportunity to have this. So I, I certainly uh, appreciate uh, Ms. Tanaka Pham for, for inviting me here today. Uh, and I will be leaving um, some additional information here uh, in case those of you that, you know, that don't want to ask your questions uh, this is information about what we offer here, uh, so feel free uh, to, to grab these. Uh, and you know, if, if your folks have any questions or clarifications, I'll leave some of my cards here as well. Um, and you know, they're more than welcome to, to give me a call, to shoot me an email, or even to visit me at my uh, office. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the CVS on Main and Carson Street? right there by Blue Lotus and Chow Fun and Popeyes. That's, my, my office is in that same plaza. Uh, so I work for Mabuhay Credit Union here in Carson. Our main office is in Gardena uh, and that's called Nikkei Credit Union. Um, so, you know, we've, we're here. Our mission and vision is to advance prosperity for our community. Uh, and it's not just through you know, the, the products and services that we offer, but through events and activities like this. Uh, so again, thank you so very much uh, for having me here. Uh, don't let this be the end of, you know, of you guys learning about funds. Uh, I understand this is a business elective. Mr. Martin, is that is that accurate? Computer uh, yeah. business. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be very key for you guys to understand that. And, and again, I'm, I'm slightly jealous that I did not have this resource as a kid growing up, uh, but the next best thing is, you know, is, is doing this at this point, uh, and hopefully you, gained, you got some value uh, out of this, uh, and, you know, it's definitely something that's, uh, that's worth notice, noting too, because a lot of times we don't really have these conversations at home, uh, and, you know, not gonna lie, a lot of times, you know, at, at your age, you don't necessarily think about the, the value of stuff sometimes, um, so hopefully this kind of gets your gears spinning uh, about finances. Uh, it's, it's not the sexiest of topics uh, to talk about, uh, but at the end of the day, again, it's, it's ultimate. It's, it's uh, very important for all of us to have at least some type of understanding. Uh, but even more so, if you're looking to do something business related, uh, you really need to have a very good grasp of this. So hopefully, you guys, uh, you know, again, it gets you started uh, in that path. All right. So my name again. Uh, it's Mr. Fred, Fred Doc Dosso. Uh, if you all have any questions or clarifications or your parents do, uh, feel free to reach out to me, okay? Thank you, thank you so very much. Can I say thank you, Mr. Fred? Thank you. You're welcome, thank you.